the duly heard sage. Lost in myself, I reappear. I know not when. A drop that rose from the sea and fell and dissolved again. A shadow that stretched itself out at dawn. When the sun reached noon, I disappeared. I have no news of my coming or passing away. The whole thing happened quicker than a breath. Ask no questions of the moth in the candle flame of his face. I have forgotten all the answers. In the way of love, there must be knowledge and ignorance. So I have become both a duliard and a sage. <coughs> One must be an eye and yet not see. So I'm blind and yet I still perceive. Dust be in my head, what can I say? Where I in bewilderment have wandered. A tar watched his heart transform both worlds and under its shadows now has gone mad with love. The Moss and the Flame Moss gathered in a fluttering throne one night to learn the truth about the candlelight, and they decided one of them should go to gather news of the elusive glow. One flew till in the distance he discerned a palace window where a candle burned, and went no nearer back again he flew to tell the others what he thought he knew. The mentor of the moss dismissed his claim, remarking, He knows nothing of the flame. A moth, more eager than the one before, set out and passed beyond the palace doors. He hovered in the aura of the fire, a trembling blur of timorous desire, then headed back to say how far he'd been and how much he had undergone and seen. The mentor said, You do not hear the signs of one who fathom how the candle shine. Another moth flew out, his dizzling flight turned into an ordered wooing of the light. He dipped and soar, and in his friends and trace, both self and fire were mingled by his dance. The flame engulfed his wings, tips, body, head. His being glowed a fierce translucent red. And when the mentor saw that sudden blaze, the moss form lost within the glowing rays, he said, He knows, he knows, he knows the truth we speak, that hidden truth of which we cannot speak. To go beyond all knowledge is to find that comprehension which eludes the mind. And you can never gain the long for goal until you first outsort both flesh and soul. But should one part remain, a single hair will drag you back and plunge you, plunge you in despair. No creature self can be admitted here where all identity must disappear.
The Valley of the Quest When you begin the Valley of the Quest, misfortunes will deprive you of all rest. Each moment some new troubles terrifies, and parrots that are panic-stricken flies. Their years must vanish while you strive and grieve. There is the heart of you you will achieve. Renounce the world, your power, and all you own. In your heart's blood, journey on alone. When once your hands are empty, then your heart must purify itself and move apart. From everything there is when this is done, the Lord's light blazes brighter than the sun. Your heart is bathed in splendor, and the quest expands a thousandfold within your breast. Through fires flow up across the path, and through a hundred monsters peer out from its glow. The pilgrim drives on by his desire, will like a moth rush gladly on the fire. When love inspires his heart, he begs for a win, one drop to be vouchsafe him as a sign. And when he drinks this drop, both worlds are gone. Dry lip, he founders in oblivion. His zest to no faith, mysteries will make him fight with dragons for salvation's sake. Through blasphemy and curse, crowd the gate. Until it opens, he will calmly wait. And then, <laughs> where is his faith, this blasphemy? Lo, vanish into strengthless vacancy. The pilgrim sees no form, but his and knows. The pilgrim sees no form, but his and knows, that he subsists beneath all passing shows. The pilgrim comes from him whom he can see, lives in him, with him, and beyond all three. Be lost in unity's inclusive span. Or you are human, but not yet a man. Whoever lives the wicked and the blessed Contains a hidden sun within his breast. Its light must dawn through dodge by long delay. The clouds that veil it must be torn away. Whoever reaches to this hidden sun Surpasses good and bad and knows the one. The good and bad are here while you are here. Surpass yourself and they will disappear. Invocation We are busy 
with the luxury of things. Their numbers and multiple faces bring to us confusion. We call knowledge. Say God created the world in night to day, made mountains to weigh it down, seas to wash its face, living creatures would please. The ancestors of prayer seeking a place in this mystery that float in endless space. God set the earth on the back of a mole, the bull on a fish dancing on a spool of silver light, so fine it's like air. Then in turns rest on nothing there, but nothing that nothing can share. All things are but masks of God's beak and calm. They are symbols that instruct us that God is all. God speaks to Moses. One day God spoke to Moses and said, Visit Satan, question him, use your head. So Moses descended to hell's burning halls. Satan saw him coming, a smile did he install on his fiery face. Moses proudly asked him for advice, waiting for Satan's crafty whim. Satan spoke through his cool black teeth. Remember this rule which sense bequats. Never say I so that you become like me. So as long as you live for yourself, you'll be a drum booming pride, a symbol of infidelity, vanity, resentment, envy, and anger shall be cemented into your inner state. You shall be like a demented dog with lolling tongue, infected with indolence of sin. You shall become your own trapped prisoner within. God <clears throat> speaks to David. David was an open vessel. The light poured into him. God's words took flight in him, and through him God said, To all humankind who are wed to hubbery and sin, I say, if heaven and hell did not exist to catch you and break you, would you through a speck of dust tell truth? from falsehood. Would your eye find true? Center in my words. If there is nothing but dark, would you think of me still less mark? Your place with a leaf a prayer, yet you are bound to my will. Your soul is set in the direction of my breath, with hope and fear, which cracks the dawn of your heart. So you will worship me with all your mind, words and inclination. Make a start, burn to ashes all that is not I, bind the ashes to the fidelity of the wind, extract the ore of your being, then you shall start seeing.
The pupil asks, the master answers. Why was Adam driven from the garden? The pupil asked his master. His heart was hardened with images a hundred bounds that clutter the earth, chained Adam to a cycle of death following birth. He was blind to this equation, living for something other than God. And so out of paradise he was driven, with his mortal's bodies, cover his soul was shriven. Noblest of God's creature, Adam fell with blame, like a moth shriveled by the candle's flame, into history which taught mankind shame. Since Adam had not given up his heart to God's attachment, there was no part <coughs> for Adam in paradise, where the only friend is God. His will is not for Adam to imagine and bend. The Nightingale The Nightingale raises his head, drugged with passion, pouring the oil of earthly love in such a fashion that the other birds, shaded with his song, grew moved. The leaping mysteries of his melody are acute. I know the secrets of love. I am their piper. He sings, I seek a David with broken heart to decipher. Their plaintiff barbs, I inspire the yearning flute, the damien of the plucked conversation of the lute. The roses are dissolved into fragrance by my song. Hearts are torn with its so sobering tune, broken along. The fault lines of longing filled with desire is wrong. My music is like the sky's black ocean. I steal the listener's reason. The world becomes the seal of dreams for chosen lovers, where only the rose is certain. I cannot go further. I am lame and expose my anchored soul to the divine way. My love for the rose is sufficient. I shall stay in the vicinity of its petaled image. I need no more. It blooms for me, the rose my seed. The hopo replies, you love the rose without thought. Nightingale, your foolish song is caught by the rose's thorns. It is a passing thing. Velvet petal, perfumes, repose bring you pleasure. Yes, but sorrow too, for the rose beauty is shallow. Few escapes winter's frost to seek the way. Release yourself from this love that lasts a day. The bud nurtures its own demise as day nurtures night. Groom yourself, pluck the deadly rose from your sight.
How long then will you seek for beauty here? How long then will you seek for beauty here? Seek the unseen, and beauty will appear. When the last well is lifted, neither men nor all their glory will be seen again. The universe will fade, this mighty show in all its majesty and pomp will go, and those who loved appearances will prove each other's enemies and forfeit love, while those who loved the absent, unseen friend will enter that pure love which knows no end. Look, I do nothing, he performs all deeds. Look, I do nothing, he performs all deeds. And he endures the pain when my heart bleeds, when he draws near and grants you an audience. Should you hang back in tongue-tied indifference? When will your cautious heart consent to go beyond the homely boundaries you know? O oh, slave, if he should show his love to you, love which his deeds perpetually renew, you will be nothing, you will disappear. Leave all to him who acts, and have no fear. If there is any, if there is any you, if any wrath of self persist, you strayed outside our faith. The Hawk He was a soldier with a soldier's pride, this hawk whose home was a king's side. He was haughty as his master, all other birds thought him a disaster. His beak was feared as much as his talons. With hooded eyes, his place on a royal rooster was his prize. He stands sentinel on the king's arm, polite and train meticulously to do what is right and proper with courtly grace. He has no need to see the simp even in a dream. His deeds are some sufficient for him, and no journey could replace the royal command. Royal morsel food, no disgrace. To his way of thinking, he easily satisfies the king. He flies with cutting grace on sinister wings through valleys and upward into the sky. He has no other wish but so to live and then to die. The Hopi says you have no sense with your soldier's pride. Do you think that supping with kings doing their will is enough to keep you in favor, always at their side? An earthly long may be just but you must be aware still, for a king's justice is a whim pretending to be good. Once there was a king who prized his slave for his beauty. His body's silver sheen fascinated the prince who would dress him in fine clothing, 
so his looks alone were his duty. The king amused himself by placing on his favorite's head an apple for a bullseye. The poor silver slave would grow yellow with fear because he knew too well blood is red. His silver hue would be tarnished if the king's how was not true. An injured slave would his slave lose to be discarded because the king would not be amused. The lover. A lover, said that hopo, now their guide. It is one whom all thoughts of self have died. Those who renounce the self deserve that name. Righteous or sinful, they are the same. Your heart is thrudded by the self's control. Destroy its hold on you and reach your goal. Give up this hidden hindrance. Give up mortal sight, for only then can you approach the light. If you are told, renounce our faith, obey. The self and faith must both be tossed away. Blasphemers call such action blasphemy. Tell them that love exceeds mere piety. Love has no tie for blasphemy or faith, nor lovers for the self that feeble. Wrath. The Peacock's Excuse Next come the peacock, spindly arrayed in many-colored pomp. This he displayed, as he were some proud, self-conscious bride, turning with haughtily looks from side to side. The painter of the world granted me, he shrieked, but this celestial wealth you see should not excite your hearts to jealousy. I was a dweller once in paradise. There the insinuating snake's advice deceived me. I became his friend. Disgrace was swift, and I was banished from that place. My dearest hope is that some blessed day a guide will come to indicate the way back to my paradise. The king you praise is too unknown a goal. My inward gaze is fixed forever on that lovely land. There is the goal which I can understand. How can I seek the smick out when I remember paradise? And in reply, the hopo said, These thoughts have made you stray further and further from the proper way. You think your monarch's play palace of more worth than him who fashioned it and all the earth. The home we seek is an eternity. The truth we seek is like a shoreless sea, of which your paradise is but a drop. The ocean can be yours. Why should you stop? Beguiled by dreams of effervescent dew. The secrets of the sun are yours, but you Content yourself with moat trapped in its beams. Turn to what truly lives, reject what seems. 
What matters more, the body or the soul? Be whole, desire, and journey into the whole. All who reflecting as reflected see, all who reflecting as world reflecting see themselves in me, and me in them, not me, but all of me that have contracted I is comprehensive of infinity, not yet themselves, no selves, but of the all, fractions from which they split and wither fall, as water lifted from the deep again, falls back in individual drops of rain, then melts into the universal main. All you have been, and seen, and done, and thought, not you, but I have seen, and been, and wrought. I was the sin that from myself rebelled, I the remorse that told myself compelled. I was the Talador who led the track. I was the little briar that pulled you back. Sin and contrition, retribution owed and canceled. Pilgrim, pilgrimage and road. War but myself towards myself and your arrival but myself at my own door. Who in your fraction of myself behold, myself within the mirror, myself hold, to see myself in and each part of me, that sees himself through drowned shall ever see? Come, you lost atoms, to your center draw, and be the eternal mirror that you saw. Rays that have wandered into darkness wide, return and back into your sun subside. I shall grasp the soul's skirt with my hand. I shall grasp the soul shirt with my hand, <laughs> and stamp on the world's head with my foot. I shall trample matter and space with my horse. Beyond all being, I shall utter a great shout. In that moment when I shall be alone with him, I shall whisper secrets to all mankind. Since I have neither sign nor name, I shall only speak of things unnamed and without sign. Do not delude yourself that from a burned heart I will discourse with palate and tongue. The body is impure, I shall cast it away. 
and utter these pure words with soul alone. Looking for your own face. Your face is neither infinite nor ephemeral. You can never see your own face, only a reflection, not the face itself. So you sigh in front of mirrors and cloud the surface. It's better to keep your breath cold, hold it like a diver does in the ocean. One slight movement the mere image goes. Don't be dead or asleep or awake. Don't be anything. What you most want, what you travel around wishing to find. Lose yourself as lovers. Lose themselves and you'll be that. Mysticism. The sun can only be seen by the light of the sun. The more a man or woman knows, the greater the bewilderment. The closer to the sun, the more dazzled until a point is, is reached where no one no longer is. A mystic knows without knowledge, without intuition or information, without contemplation or description or revelation. Mystics are not themselves. They do not exist in cells. They move as they are moved, talk as words come, see with sight that enters their eyes. I met a woman once and asked her where love had led her. Fool, there's no destination to arrive at. Love one and lover and love are infinite. The angels have bowed down to you and drowned. The angels have bowed down to you and drowned. Your soul and being past all blubber's sound. Do not despise yourself, for there is none who can come with you sustain comparison. Do not torment yourself. Your soul is all, your body but a fleeting particle. This all will clarify, and in its light, each particle will shine distinctly bright 
as flesh remains an agent of the soul. Your soul, an agent of the sacred whole, but part and whole must disappear at last. The way is won, and number is surpassed. A hundred thousand clouds above you press. Their reign is pure, unending happiness, and when the desert blooms with flowers, their scent and beauty minister to your content. The prayer of all the angels, all they do, all their obedience, God bestows on you. The birds find their king. Once more they ventured from the dust to raise their eyes up to the throne, into the blaze. And in the center of the glory there, behold the figure of themselves, as twelve transfigured, looking to themselves, beheld the figures on the throne in miracle, until their eyes themselves and that between did hesitate which seer was, which seen, that th they that, that they another, yet the same, individual, yet one, from whom they come, a voice of awful answer, scarce discerned, from which to aspiration who return. They scarcely knew as when some man apart answers aloud the question in his heart, The sun of my perfection is a glass, wherein from seeing into being pass. The eternal mirror. Not you, but I have seen and been and wrought, who in your fraction of myself behold, myself within the mirror, myself hold to see myself in, and each part of me that sees himself, though drown shall ever see, come you lost atoms to your center draw, and be the eternal mirror that you saw, rays that have wandered into darkness wide, return and back into your sun, into your sun subside. 